Mr. Shanley. It's fabulous having you here. Thank you for having me, Mr. Shanley. Well, my pleasure. So we're going to talk about uh, differentiability and continuity of functions. So I'm looking at a piecewise function here, and I want f of x to be differentiable. In fact, I'm telling you that f of x is differentiable. That's given information. And what is differentiability again? You know, I'm so glad you asked. So if a function is differentiable, it means two things. It means, first of all, it's continuous. In other words, I can graph a function without lifting up my pen or pencil or a marker. And that the de derivative exists everywhere. So differentiable, you're able to differentiate. You're able to find the derivative. So whenever you're told a function is differentiable, you know right away it's continuous, and you know that the derivative exists everywhere. So if that's given information here, I know this piecewise function, it starts on something quadratic, and then it goes to some linear piece, right? I know that it's continuous, and actually, I also know it doesn't look like that, because that would have a point, that would have a cusp. So I know that when it makes its transition to the line, the slopes are the same. It's nice and smooth. The derivative exists everywhere. So my mission here is knowing that f of x is differentiable, I want to find the values of a and b. And this is kind of a classic question, right? You're given information. You have two unknowns, and you want to use that information to find those two unknowns, OK? I want to make sure I set that problem up correctly. I did. OK, good. So basically with this, if I'm looking for two unknowns, how many equations am I going to need to I solve I would suspect two. two. Yeah. System of equations, right? Right. If you have two things you're looking for, you need two different pieces of information about them. Two different equations. Okay? If I had three unknowns, I'd need three. Three. If equations. I had a hundred unknowns, I would need ninety-nine. <laughs> one hundred. Plus one. A hundred equations. So I basically want to set up two equations. I want to set up a system of equations that will allow me to find A and B. Using this given information and the piecewise function. So, here we go. I'm going to first start with my knowledge that if a function is differentiable, it must be continuous. For a piecewise to be continuous, that means when I'm done with this piece, when x is 3, and I transition to this piece, the y values have to be equal. That means there's no points or no holes or there's no pull there's no holes, there are no jumps. So where this quadratic ends, the line begins at exactly the same y value. So I'm just gonna say, okay, so at x equals three, right? The y values have to be equal. So I'm just gonna plug in a three for my x. A three for my x. And where so did you get that go. 3 from? I got my 3 right from there. From either one? Yeah, okay. because this piece is ending when x is 3, and then this piece begins when x is 3. So if I'm graphing 1, 2, 3, I don't know exactly what this looks like, but I'm going to have a parabola that ends, and then the line begins, and I know it begins at exactly the same y value. But it's not an arbitrary number, right? It's not an arbitrary number. We're going to find what that y value is. Okay. okay. So I have an equation. Let's just clean this up a little bit. So that's going to be 9a plus b equals 3b plus 4. What the heck? Can I just say 9a equals 2b plus 4? I think we can do that in our head. All right. I have a relationship between A and B. Now I'm looking for a second relationship. So I'm going to go back to my given. So I know it's differentiable. Hey, that means the derivative is the same. That means when I make the transition from the quadratic to the line, from this piece to this piece, the 
the slopes are the same, because if they weren't the same, I'd have a cusp. Right. And that's not differentiable. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. Can you see me over here, Mr. Shanley? Yes. Okay, so now, this was using my continuity piece. So now, since I know the function is differentiable, I know that the derivative of this piece equals the derivative of this piece when x equals 3. And derivative is the... So I'm going to take the derivative of this piece, which is 2ax plus... Oh, well, wait a minute. b is just a constant. What's the derivative of a constant? Zero. Okay. And the derivative of this... Here, let me write this differently. The derivative of that first piece is 2ax. You still have me on there? The derivative of yeah, this I wouldn't go any further second than that, piece, all right, okay. is going to just be b. Perfect. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I know that this derivative has to equal this derivative at the moment that x is 3. So I'm going to plug in an x value of 3, so 2a times 3 has to equal b, so 6a must equal b. There is my second relationship. I now have a system of equations. Okay? My first equation came from my knowledge that these were this function was continuous. And from my second equation came from my knowledge that the function was differentiable. Alright, I'm gonna do some erasing. I'm gonna keep those two pieces, those two equations, and write them as a system. So I have 6a equals b and I have my 9a equals 2b plus 4. Now, Mr. Stanley, we're just going back to algebra days. Those were fun days. Yeah, those were fun days, right? System of equations. Well, I don't know, I could do this. I, I think I'm just gonna do substitution. I think I'm just gonna plunk that 6a in for that b. That's totally is that illegal? illegal? That is totally illegal. All right, so I have 9a totally equals illegal, not illegal. 2 times 6a <laughs> plus 4. So I have 9a equals 12a plus 4, subtract 12, negative 3a equals 4. So a, that constant, equals negative 4 thirds. I have found one value, and now finding the second value, I can go back to, you know, any equation I like. I think I'll do this guy. If b equals 6 times a, then 6 times negative 4 thirds equals b and I have b equaling negative 8 if I did my calculations correctly. They look good from here. Beautiful. So basically what I have solved is... Yeah, so what are those numbers? Yeah, well let's put them in. Let's put them in. So my a was negative 4 thirds. My b was negative 8. So there we go. I have my function, my piecewise function, that is both continuous and differentiable. Which means, if you graphed this parabola, right, for all x up to and including 3, and then you made the transition to this piece, you would have a beautiful, seamless transition. That parabola, well, I guess it's an upside-down parabola, right? Well, it has to be, right? It has to be. So that parabola, right, when x gets to equal negative 3, is going to segue beautifully into the line, right? So this would be the piece negative 8x plus 4. This would be the piece negative 4 thirds x squared minus 8. It's continuous, and the slope is the same at that point. Thanks, Mr. Chandling. Thank you, Ms. Stewart.